You guys see this? Yep. All right. So one of the huge advantages that Solidus gives you is that you can bring in parts from uh, other CAD software. And they're not dumb solids. So what really happens is in history base, because the model is sketch dependent, every software has their own like sketching mechanism that are used. So say you have uh, a part in this software, you want to put it in the other software. Like you can probably open the part if it's a STL or step file, but there's nothing else you can do. You can just look at the part. That's all you can do because uh, your program or the program that you're using can't really uh, identify the sketch related to the part because it's a sketch dependent. And what really happens is that it has no idea how the part was made. So there is no way you can uh, edit it. But uh, solidus and synchronous technology. Synchronous technology is history free, right? Uh, it takes the best of both worlds in terms of history base and uh, direct modeling and combines them together. And what really happens is uh, synchronous doesn't really care about the sketches anymore. Doesn't really care how the model was made. So when you bring in a part into uh, synchronous or and solid edge with the help of synchronous can not only you can open that part, you can also edit it. And that's very huge. Especially if you're in launch forward and you do all these different projects, you know, and you may not own all the parts, right? You go to GrabCAD, you grab one part for your car, you grab the wheel, you put it on, uh, all this is stuff. And say the wheel is a bit bigger for your car. You need to uh, uh, make it smaller. Uh, there is a gear you want to use. You don't want to make it again, but you want to use it. And there is an extra teeth on there that you don't need, right? These are the things that you can also modify uh, using solid edge and synchronous technology. Here I have a part open from uh, SolidWorks. Let me go ahead and show you guys how the opening process works. So what you want to do is to go to open and browse. Yeah, you guys can see this, right? Yeah. We okay. Can see. You go to browse. And just to show you what kind of part documents you can open, here's all the documents you can open. Inventor, SolidWorks, Creo, X underbar T, uh, you name it, it's here, right? So uh, here, this is the part that I want to open. And when I click on it, I can also go to options. This is a, a SDL part and there is different options that I can do the importing with. Uh, in this case, all I'm going to do is to keep the default settings for it and then open. And it asks me what type of part environment do I want it to be? In this case, I know this is a part, so let me put it into part. Mm -hmm. And it translates, and here it is. Here's my part. So now I have this. Uh, there are uh, multiple things I want to do, but this is a specific part. This is a gear with different teeth. And when you have a gear with different teeth, what really matters to you usually is the number of teeth. So we have a huge uh, feature in Solid Edge, which we call recognize pattern. And basically it can recognize any pattern on import a part, it being rectangular or circular. In this case, uh, I want to select one of the teeth. So what I do is that the computer is a bit slow here, so Forgive me if this actually takes a bit. There are a couple of updates on the computer by the IT, so it works a bit of slow today. Yeah. But here is I selected the T. What I want to do is that go here, recognize the pattern, and it recognizes a circular pattern. You can see type. So I accept it, and then I can have a pattern in my Pathfinder now. And it tells me there is 28 teeth here. I want to make it five. So let it process and there we go. Or nice. yeah. Or it, it really matters what you select, right? You select that, or you select a little bit of this, you select this part, and that's also a pattern. You can recognize it, right? 
So depending what we really want to do is you can do whatever you want to make it uh, larger, make you smaller, do whatever you want. So that's how the recognize pattern works, basically. You can recognize any pattern that you have and just play around, right? I'm just gonna go one down now, see how it looks every time I do. So you can just play around and figure out what's the number of teeth that you like, but not only can do this, you can do uh, rectangular patterns as well. So that was uh, one of the main things, uh, is the recognize pattern feature, which comes in huge. Uh, I also wanna show you another part. Let's see. So I want to find the S, uh, SOLIDWORKS for us. So what I really do here is, and here it is. So if I go and open it, here's a part, right? It's a SOLIDWORKS part, I imported it here. The, so, First thing let me do is I want to go ahead and change the color of this. That's very easy using the part painter. Let's make it blue. Now check this out. Using synchronous, I can grab any of these faces and I can drag them in and out. Not only that, the design intent also realizes that this is symmetric. That's so it's basically yeah. changing all four at the same time. There's one at the back, but. So not only you can recognize patterns, you can also modify the faces. And if that's not enough for you, you can go ahead and use the smart dimension, either from here or from the home tab, smart dimension and just dimension anything that you want. I dimension that. And it's gonna modify it for me, as you can see. Mm, that's pretty neat compared to what it used to be like. Yeah, yeah so what you can do is that uh, use a smart dimension and modify any dimension that you want on the fly on the 3D basis itself. And also, I want to show you guys another feature that we have. It's the whole recognition. So if I click on any of these, it's just smart enough to know that this is a hole and it gives me a diameter. So say if I wanna change the diameter to, it also recognizes the uh, symmetry. So say I wanna make the diameter like five, I can. But another option that I have is using the uh, hole recognition. So it recognizes these holes, that big one and that small one. Uh, so what you want to do is that you can go ahead and change the hole type for it, which is very huge. There's all mm -hmm. different types of options. In this case, let's just go and do this type right here. Right, we do a counter bore with all the defaults. Just press OK. And you can see now I have four counter bore holes. Yeah, I like that. And this is very huge. You can do whatever type of hole that you want. It really doesn't matter. So these are, these are the uh, uh, basic 
uh, things that Sol SolidEdge can do in terms of editing border parts. Uh, there are a bit more, uh, and I'm pretty sure we posted two tutorials on this, I think. Uh, uh, it's good if uh, you would like to go and watch those again. Those uh, basically uh, give you maybe a bit more information, or it's basically takes you again through the whole recognize pattern, recognize whole, using smart dimension to edit. But I guess the, the big thing that I want you guys to take away is that uh, nothing is really dumb solid and solid edge as I would like to call it dumb solid is because it's a solid, but there's nothing you can do with it. Mm. Uh, that's why we call it dumb solids, but nothing is really dumb using synchronous technology because synchronous, it's not a sketch dependent, it's not history dependent. So you can bring in basically anything uh, and modify it here. That's nice, yeah. This is very cool. And that's that's as far as I had for editing port parts fast and easy. I might have a question regarding the pattern recognition. Go um, for it. So if we imagine the pattern is a little more complicated uh, than uh, each uh, cog repeating each uh, after the other, and you imagine you have one set of higher cogs, and then you have a set uh, that is a little lower. So you have basically two or three elements making up of the pattern. Um, is there any chance it would recognize that or sort of what do you have to pay attention to if you want to optimize for pattern recognition and really exploit the feature? So uh, that's a good question. So if, if it's something like that, uh, you had mentioned you have like three different type of teeth, for example, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so what you really want to do is that you want to uh, select the, entity that you think is actually a pattern. So if you have three different things that are three different patterns, so what you wanna do is you wanna recognize a pattern three times. So first select the first feature that you think is a pattern, then recognize that, then do the second one, and do the third one. Or if like you, you did three different things and you pattern it at once, just select all of them together. So what you really wanna do is you wanna make sure you're selecting the right entity for the pattern. And yeah. that will come with experience and also just playing around, right? Yeah. If you recognize the pattern and you don't like it, just go ahead and undo it, right? Do it again. See mm -hmm. if, uh, select another entity, see if that's your pattern and then play around a little bit. That's what I would recommend. Yeah. Yeah, that um, really seems like an extremely useful tool. Also, the, the whole thing where you, I mean, that's exactly what um, is extremely useful, these small little details when you adapt it. And, you know, you are using a slightly different system. You have different screws uh, from other projects laying around or whatnot. And then if you can just click and uh, rework this, you can also make better, custom holes very as well if you wanted. You know, if you have a custom screw or bolt, you can make a custom hole as well. So there are settings for that as well. Yeah, the the whole pattern recognition is uh, is very powerful. I would say there are, there are way too many holes options that we have available. So <laughs> anything from metric inches, whatever you want, so it's right there. Nice. Yeah, for me, that's all pretty straightforward, clear, and useful. Same. <laughs>